This lesson is about average rate of change, and we're going to see that it is just another way of talking about the slope. All right, when we do the average rate of change, we are going to need two points. And I recommend that you make yourself a small table of values, um, one big enough for two points. Something such as this will do nicely. Now, we're given two x values in this case, uh, an x value of negative one and an x value of positive one. We just need to find the y values that go with these x values. So let's look at the graph and let's look for negative one and positive one. Okay, so if I go to negative one on the x-axis, um, so here I am on the x-axis at negative one. To get to the graph, I have to go down down, 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 down. All the way to here. This y value is negative 12. So I have at negative 1, we have a y value of negative 12. So we have negative 1, comma, negative 12. All right, what about at positive 1? Okay, at positive 1, again on the x axis, here I am at positive 1. Um, this is weird though, because that doesn't look like one. Hold on. All right, I see what's happening. Um, they're counting every other square. So this is at an x value of one, but they're counting, uh, they're, they're skipping lines as they go. So this is one. So at an x value of one, we are in fact at a y value of two as you can see. So we have one comma two. All right, so now we're ready to calculate the rate of change. Now, please understand this. All right, I think I'll say this in green. The rate of change equals the slope. Okay, so remember the formula for slope was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when we do the rate of change, we're just going to be using the same slope formula. So y2 minus y1. So these are my y values. So 2 minus. Now be careful with this negative 12. When, when you're subtracting and the second number is negative, I highly recommend you put that second number in parentheses. All right, this is not just two minus 12, this is two minus negative 12. Hear the double negative here? Two minus negative 12. Okay, now the x values are, again, I'm doing one minus negative one. Okay, now please remember how we handle a double negative like this. Minus a negative is addition. So this is the same thing as 2 plus 12 over 1 plus 1. Okay, so this is 14 over 2, which equals 7. So the rate of change is 7. Now, if you have any trouble doing these calculations by hand, at this point, I, I want you to use the calculator. So so we hit that fraction bar and we could go 2 minus open parentheses negative 12 close parentheses and I think in the bottom it was 1 minus and put the negative 1 in parentheses and check it out 7 so if you're having any trouble with the calculations just put it in your calculator just like that alright same answer alright Let's do the same thing with these new x values. I believe we're still doing the same picture even. So let's get our table of values started. Um, if you just watched me do problem number one and now you have an idea of how to do it, uh, let me recommend that you pause the video right now and try to do number two on your own. Okay, I don't know if you did that or not, but I must 
proceed, my friend. Um, 1.5 is our first x value, and our other x value is 3. Okay, so let me see if I can find the y value. So if I go to 1.5, ah, that's why they are counting every other square. Because now I can go to 1.5, should be right here in the middle. So if I go to 1.5, uh, to get to the graph, I'm going to have to go up to here. Okay, that is a y value of 2. Point, no, okay, these ones aren't counting by. This is actually 1, 2, 3. Okay, I started to say 2.5, but this is really a y value of 3. Okay, so we are really dealing with the point uh, 1.5, comma 3. Okay. Next, we need to look at a x value of 3. Okay, so if I go over to an x value of 3, what do I see? An x value of 3 is right here, but I'm kind of seeing that the, uh, at an x value of 3, the function is on the line. So that is a y value of 0. So I've got 3 comma 0 going on here. Okay, so now we will do our slope calculations because rate of change equals slope. So let's go ahead and do our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, y minus y. So um, that would be 0 minus 3. Okay, now x minus x, so 3 minus 1.5. Now, with the decimals and all, I'm just going to put this in the calculator. Okay, so uh, we've got 0 minus 3, so a fraction button. So 0 minus 3, and then uh, 3 minus 1.5. Okay, oh look, that's negative 2. Genius. So that is the rate of change for problem number two. Okay, for the table below, find the average rate of change. Uh, okay, so we're talking about this table over here, I guess. All right, so just like we did before, first thing you do is you make your little table of values. So I've got my x and my y, make spaces. So my x values are negative 1 and negative 4. Now I need to find the y values that go with them. Hold on, I wanted that to be red. Okay, so we have negative 1 and negative 4. Okay, well look, at negative 1, we got 1. So that's one of our points, negative 1, comma 1. At negative 4, we got 13. Okay, time to do the rate of change or slope. So we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, y2 minus y1, so that's 13 minus 1. And then x2 minus x1, so negative 4 minus, whoa, be careful, it's negative 4 minus negative 1. Put the negative 1 in parentheses. Okay. Now, I'm going to do this one by hand and the calculator. By hand, I'm thinking, okay, 12, uh, I'm sorry, 13 minus 1, that's 12. In fact, hold on, let me save that for the next step. All right, I've got 13 minus 1. But look, right here, um, minus and negative is the same thing as plus. So this is what I have. I've got 13 minus 1, and I've got negative 4 uh, plus 1. Okay? 13 minus 1, that's 12. Negative 4 plus 1, that's negative 3. So that is going to give me negative 4 for the rate of change. Okay, let's do it again for number four. Let's make that table of values. Let's make it count. 
Okay, so here's our table. Now our x values are negative 2 and 0. Um, well, easy enough. Okay, so looking at those x values, what did I say? Negative 2 and 0? So here's my negative 2 and here's my 0. Okay, so negative 2 comma 3 and 0 comma 3. Okay, well, wow, that's the same y value. So anyway, if I go ahead and do um, y minus y over x minus x. Okay, then that is going to be like this. Y minus y, well, that's 3 minus 3. X minus x, well, that's 0 minus negative 2. Anytime the second number is, in, uh, is a negative, put it in parentheses. Um, well, this is like having 3 minus 3 over 0 plus 2. So that's going to give me 0 over 2. 0 divided by anything is just 0. It's not undefined. That's what you would get if the 0 were in the denominator. This is simply 0 rate of change. Okay, now we're looking at equations, but we will do it the same exact way. Let's make our table of values. Okay, our x values are negative 1 and negative 4. Now we just need to find the y values that go with them. Um, to do that, let's use our calculator. So I've got negative x plus 2 squared. Hit the table feature, clear that mess out. So I have negative quantity x plus 2 quantity squared. And I believe it was like plus 1 or something. Let's take another look. Negative x plus 2 squared plus 1. Negative x plus 2 squared plus 1. All right, great. So I just hit enter. It's asking me where I want to start. Uh, I might as well start at negative 4. Well, I'll start at negative 1. doesn't matter. It's already negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So look, at negative 1, I got 0. So negative 1, comma 0. How about negative 4? I'm going to have to scroll for that. Negative 4 is negative 3. Okay, so now it's time for the rate of change. The rate of change. So um, we're going to go y minus y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so that's negative 3 minus 0. Okay, y minus y. And then negative 4 minus. Now be careful. The second number is negative. I recommend you put it in parentheses. Okay? Now, if you were to do this by hand, negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. Um, now, this is like having negative 4 plus 1, because that whole minus and negative thing. Okay, so that's like negative 3 over, oh, look, negative 3. So that actually makes positive 1. Okay, <clears throat> um, excellent. Never forget, I could have typed this whole thing into the calculator if I wanted to, all right? I could have gone fraction mode, negative three minus zero. Over negative four minus negative one. All right, either way, you get positive 1. Oh, let's do the same thing for number 6. Okay, let's make our table of values. All right, so the x values 
are 3 and 7. I just felt like putting them in order. So 3 and 7. To find the y values, okay, um, just making sure there's nothing over there. <clears throat> so look, we're still using the same equation as before. Okay, so I believe that that's, uh, because it's the same equation as number five, I still have that equation in my calculator. All right, but if you just jump straight to this problem, type this equation in the table function of your calculator. And hit enter. Now, we need to start at three, because that's our first x value. So make it start at three. Okay, so at x value 3, we have negative 24. What about 7? At 7, the y value is negative 80. Okay, let's go ahead and do the rate of change, or slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so y2. So I'm looking at negative 80 minus. Whoa, guys. Um, when the second number you're about to subtract is negative, put it in parentheses. It will help you um, remember to put the negative sign at all. A lot of kids will just put negative 80 minus 24, which is totally wrong. It's negative 80 minus negative 24. Uh, anyway, now the x value. So 7 minus three okay um, let's just go ahead and type this into the calculator shall we negative 80 minus negative 24 okay so I so it's negative 80 minus negative 24 oh, I meant to put that in parentheses Okay, there we go. Negative 80 minus negative 24. And in the bottom, we have 7 minus 3. So you get negative 14. Okay, so that was number 6. How about number 7? Oh, wait! There is no number 7. So guys, this is the end of this lesson. You just learned how to calculate the rate of change. Um, and you just learned that rate of change is the same thing as the slope. You're welcome.